everyone. Welcome back to TC 911 Beyond the Call podcast. This is episode six, and I am your host, Abby Dudek, the co- communications coordinator at Tarrant County 911 District. And today I have the amazing pleasure of talking with Stacy here at MedStar Healthcare. She is one of the supervisors here. Hello, Stacy. Good morning, Abby. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah. You are a supervisor here at MedStar. Do you want to maybe start talking? about how your uh, career path here at MedStar? First off, maybe we should talk about how MedStar, we've talked about other, we've talked to other agencies that dispatch their own medical and, but MedStar, tell us how MedStar works. So MedStar is a secondary PSAP. By that, I mean, we get the calls, the 911 calls are routed through the police department. And once the police department um, notices that it's a medical, then they send it to us. And if it's fire, they send it to fire. So we actually dispatch medical ambulances. And then if our medical director sets the criteria that fires needed or police are needed on specific calls, then we dispatch them as well. First off, remind us what PSAP means because I'm always testing my listeners to see if they've listened to all my other episodes because it talks about a lot. And go with it, Stacy. What's it mean? Public safety answering point. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her? You get to be on my podcast. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good news. Winner, winner. So what's in, in Tarrant County, and I know you have some of the outs, outside of Tarrant County, what are your... Uh, servicing areas for MedStar? So currently we have, Fort Worth is the biggest, we have Burleson currently, White Settlement, Hazlitt, Saginaw, Lake Worth, Lakeside, Haltom City, Blue Mound, Forest Hill. Edgecliff Village. And Edgecliff. Yeah. And West Worth and West Worth Village and um, Westover. Westover Hills. Oh. So, folks, if you're driving around the Tarrant County area or in those areas and you always see MedStar's running, MedStar boxes running around, they cover so much. I always um, enjoy, you know, bless these men and women that are out there too, and especially in this heat. They will, because a lot of people ask me, they're like, how come there's a, a, an ambulance parked here or how come they're parked here? And I was like, because they're waiting for they're waiting for a call. They're not going to come back here because, you know, Med, for all you don't know, MedStar is off of 30 off of uh, Altamir. And wait, did I say that? No, Altamir. Is it Mil- not Altamir? Yeah, it's is it Altamir? Altamir. Okay. And 30. And then we have a second yeah. hub up north off of North Tarrant. Yeah. A Medical City Alliance. Yeah, there you go. So a lot of times if you see these amazing men and women sitting in their ambulances, they're not just taking a breather and having a 7-Eleven Slurpee. They are actually waiting for calls. It always scares me too when you're in traffic and then they get a call in traffic and they're right behind you and they turn your lights on and you're like, oh God, they're, I'm doing everything I can yes. <laughs> to get out of your way. <laughs> so move over for these emergency vehicles, move over any emergency vehicle because they're going to save lives. Yes. So, and how did they get, how are they on their way? From our good friends in the communication center. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so how long have you been at MedStar? It will be 36 years next month. You started when you were 12, right? Of course I did. Oh my gosh, of you're course. so spry. <laughs> so I started as a um, medic in in the field, and I worked in the field for several years. I, I can't even remember what year I moved up to the comm communication center. I'm sorry. I believe it was in 94. But I still worked out in the field part time as a as a medic, and then I worked on the mounted team. So the mounted team? Yes, we have a mounted team. Wait, Mister, I don't want to sound silly, but are you talking about like horses and stuff? Horses, of course. It's, it's for work. You got to have a mounted I know. team. I, I got it. You know, I've been here for eleven years now. I, I sh- I'm officially a Texan. I should know this stuff. So you guys have a MedStar horse brigade. Well, it was more active several years prior um we've kind of dwindled down on on doing any horse functions although i think that they're trying to reactivate that but yes we do have a mounted team and we primarily did most of the parades or demos and stuff out in the out in the community i wanted to do like the search and rescue any of the tornadoes or the events that happen that would cause, I mean, disaster, not that we're going to get... Like disaster events. Yeah. I, don't, I know we had earthquakes here a couple of years ago, but they, were, they weren't like going to cause massive, much damage. Yeah, massive earthquakes. But lost children or um, kids that get lost out in some of our rural areas to go out with the police department because obviously they're going to probably need medical attention once they're found. So ultimately that's what I wanted to do with the mounted team. Kind of... That's amazing. Support the 
the police mounted team as well. My first your shock value will be zero at this, but my first initial, I just totally pictured like just a horse responding with like a med, like a med star person just sitting on a horse instead of coming on ambulance and then just riding in when like, here you go, just go to a regular residential. <laughs> All the ambulances are busy. We got this horse. We're going to go out there. And <laughs> I'm like, that would be an amazing turn. Right? Like, you know, Hey, what a great response time. Who showed up? Well, they showed up great. I mean, they showed up on a horse, but Hey, they got things done. Save lives, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, the bike right. team goes down to West seventh where it's so congested with vehicles. You can't really get an ambulance. Oh, so the gosh, I didn't know that. So you guys been, are on mountain bikes also down there, just like police kind of patrol on their little bikes. Yes. Oh, wow. See, I have to be educated also. But I, but I also, with the medical side, I try not to call you guys a lot. Just that one time. <laughs> Or was it two? No, I only think I called once. I think it was like last Christmas or two Christmases ago or something like that. So when you were on the trails, yeah, when I was on the trail with your little duck, with my with Chuck the bike duck, yeah. So it's a totally. I I did that. I uh, I got great service though. Great Good. service, great response time. It was amazing. And I do have to say that the young man in the ambulance, I wish I, I wish I like, well, I'm sure it's all in there somewhere, somewhere in there. There was a young man on there. Was a, it was a young gal and a young guy and they were amazing. And I was so impressed with him because out of all of my medical stuff that I had done, some, a lot of people struggle with getting my vein, like to get a needle in my veins and stuff because they're so tiny. And and he did it like I didn't even know he did it. And I was like, I go, congratulations, man. You are amazing. Because not no one can. I was so impressed with him. Yeah, glad to hear that. Very so, glad to hear. Yeah, I love saying that kind of stuff because it's it's just people need to know how much the how great some of these men, a lot of these men and women are that are out in the first responder world, especially in uh, an ambulance services and everything. So so you've you've been here for, you know, a little bit. Yeah, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with my life. <laughs> what are you gonna do when you get when you when you become a big kid? Yeah. <laughs> so did you so you came back in from working on the field and you came into the communication center and were you a, a frontline dispatcher? Had you, had you not been promoted to a supervisor? Or have you always came in as a supervisor? No, I, I worked as just a number one call taker. Okay. I became a supervisor just a couple of years after that. But when we started in our communication center you'd had had to have been a medic for a minimum of five years in our system before you could come up to the communication center because we didn't have what we currently do now which is an emd uh, certification so emergency back then, emergency medical dispatch yes yes it's okay we you know what our friends at home they love it when we have so many initial stuff. It's like I got to tell them. So we got to make sure. So when folks, when you call MedStar or any of some of our uh, dispatch centers that have their own ambulance system, these dispatchers are EMD certified to yes. do emergency medical dispatch, which is a program that helps them along. Like it'll, it'll time CPR, right? It helps with any of the instructions that we need. Um, most of the people that we hire now are more lay people, meaning they don't have to have any medical background or knowledge. Terminology does kind of help, but we do have a terminology class, but literally it's, it's, it's kind of a structured call. It kind of helps you help the caller provide answers so that we can get the information to the crew and being an EMD, um, certification is actually a first responder mm -hmm. so you're truly a first responder even though you're not hands-on in the field you're hands-on over the phone mm -hmm. so yeah great thing for texas is all all 911 first they're all 911 first responders in the eyes of texas so yes. that's wonderful but yeah to have that emd training is um is very crucial in life saving too. So I'm really glad. And you just, you said that you were, you were doing, you teach it. Became, you're going to be teach it. No, teaching well, I've it. been teaching it. I've been became, teaching it. Yes. I became an EMD instructor last year. And again, there's requirements that the Academy, International Academy of Emergency Dispatch requires. And then you do a bunch of classroom in classroom for yourself. And then you do a bunch of classroom teaching with a senior instructor before you can get checked off so i enjoy teaching it now oh that's amazing i bet you you're an awesome teacher do you have them just say stacy or do you make them pronounce your last name <laughs> no i do tell them it's the common spelling of my last name oh, though. of course you would <laughs> no. so do you want to share everybody what your last name is sure it's it's U ukrainian so it's sokolsky people confuse it with the russian or they call me polish 
but it's it's Ukrainian, so. So the the reason why Stacy says common spelling as a joke is because when in in dispatch land for emergency services, when units are out and they're like, for example, I guess the best example I can think of is when officers are calling in and they want you to run a name or something, and they'll say, usually they'll be like, oh, if it's John Smith or something, they'll be like common spelling because that's pretty common. But if they're feeling funny, they'll give something like Sokolsky and say common spelling, and then you'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I must not have shut up that day in class to know to spell that. But anyway, I love that you're bringing up the different things that you've done, and you know, like you said, you became a supervisor uh Pretty quickly after coming back in, the, would you say in the in the couple of years? You said a couple of years after you came back into the comm center. I would say it was about four years after I came into the communication center. Awesome. Now, when you guys have that, was it something that the the job is posted and then you apply for? Do they do it within uh, internally first and then put it out, or how does? Because every city's differently, works differently on that kind of stuff. Some cities in our district um, they offer it first to the dispatchers, or they offer anybody internally, or then or they go ahead. And put it out for everyone it was all internal oh nice because we run so many different cities mm-hmm. we had the i before e rule if you will in english language so back in the day sometimes the firemen were volunteer for the smaller department so we didn't send firemen after a certain hour and you had to re- you had to know all these rules for the different cities so it was much easier for a internal person to move up as a supervisor to know some of the rules and and uh different like protocols and things like that that you yeah, guys have different cities that makes sense that makes sense because you guys have so many as we went over and that can't be when you're like, when you're first coming in brand new yeah that can't be easy at the gate because you got to learn all of that all of that jazz on who does what who doesn't do this and what their protocols are for each individual situation so i completely understand that that makes sense but it's good to know that if someone out there was interested in like, you know what? Wow. I want to work for MedStar because this Stacy gal sounds really awesome. And I just want to work with her. You should, cause she is awesome. Uh, you guys are currently hiring. We are currently hiring. So if anybody, even those that are just out of high school and you're, you're interested in the medical field, but you're not sure if you want to go out on an ambulance and maybe see it firsthand or be in the middle of, um, any of trauma or, you know, family family get upset when something happens to their loved one. If you don't want to be on scene, you can be behind the scenes and still provide very much needed assistance. Sometimes it's just that voice on the other end of the line, and sometimes it's CPR or birthing instructions, stopping the bleed. Mm-hmm. So there, there are very, very good opportunities for somebody that still wants to be a first responder but doesn't really want to touch someone i totally get it that'd be me yeah i don't i don't do well with um medical stuff so that's i really enjoy having folks out there that are emts and doctors and nurses bless y'all we love y'all i i could never do that nope can't do an injection to someone can't yeah it, no way but that's that's great to know too and that's a, that's a great thing to bring up too because i don't think people think of that you know i've when i'm out in the public i hear people talk about younger be like oh i want to be uh, a paramedic or uh, even a firefighter even a police officer start in dispatch and especially if doing emt be an emt and build your career here up at medstar because clearly they promote within and once you have your foot in the door you know you get to know people and you get to know the lay of the land since it's so huge yes <laughs> that's very helpful we've had several people come up through logistics which is the resupply of the vehicles which is extremely important because you got to have the equipment on the truck for the paramedics and emts to be able to do their jobs so some people come up through logistics to kind of get their feet wet learn the trucks or learn the the area because they also resupply the trucks in the different hospital areas or they come into the communication center and then eventually they choose to become an EMT or, or a paramedic. We don't want to lose them. And I think that once they're in our communication center, they they'll love appreciate it. the air conditioning. Oh, yeah. The win-win there. The yes. Win-win. That's also a, yeah. God, poor Texas and the scorching heat. Yes. <laughs> I always feel for the animals too. So I do too. Oh my gosh. I do too. When I see stray dogs or something like that, I'm like, oh, I want to take you home, but I don't know how my two will handle that because <laughs> yeah. mine are kind of nuts. So, but also too, like when you see the cows out here, out in the fields and everything, I don't know how, I'm not very uh, well knowledge in farm life. So I don't know how that affects them 
like cows, I don't know, horses, you know, horses. Yeah. And the cows, they, they all get hot. Yeah. And you, horses, especially you've got to give them, you know, the fresh water. And sometimes, well, the ones at our house get electrolytes right now to encourage their drinking and salt blocks, mineral blocks. Oh, are they like drinking Powerades or what's up over there? <laughs> They're chugging monsters. Here we go. Well, sometimes I'm um, on a dehydrated horse. They'll put the Gatorade mixture in with oh, the water and like stuff. Like the powdered stuff that mm-hmm. you buy. Oh, that's yeah. smart. Let's see. There you go. Drink your gate. Drink your Gatorade. Drink your Powerade. Not Stay electrolytes. hydrated. Stay hydrated. Yes. Mester is also really good about, you know, you should, everyone needs to follow them on social media because you guys share a lot of good information you not only do you share like heat warnings and things like that but you guys are very in with the community you do a lot of different events you promote a lot of blood drives and everything and you also share statistics of heat related calls and everything I love seeing that because it's just you know it's kind of an educational moment for everyone to be like hey this is happening you know talk to loved ones check on people when it's this hot yes. or if it gets cold again heaven help us if that happens again <laughs> so yes um Matt Zavosky does a very very good job oh he's brilliant public yeah, really, really. I even get his emails. I feel so special. I'm always like, oh, yay. I know what's going on. But there's so much information mm-hmm. that he puts out there. Um, educational. Um, he he relays our statistics here, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, they, they go out to the public so that they have that working knowledge. So, yeah, if you have not joined the MedStar Facebook page, try to and and see what information that, that it can provide you. We do the CPR classes and the Stop the Bleed. They do a lot of demos at the different um, elementary and middle schools. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we do some standbys in the in the area. Yeah. And you guys are at there. I, I get to meet a lot of your wonderful men and women in, on in the ambulance team because uh, they're usually at a lot of events that I'm at. And everybody always puts us right next to each other. They're like, oh, well, we'll put MedStar and 9 That makes sense. Put yes. us together. Yeah. So that is, that's just, that's just wonderful. And it's, it also shows too, like there's so many different career paths you can take here just in, just in MedStar alone. And so that's, that's good to know. But of course the best place is going to be in the communications room with Miss Stacy here. So (laughs) what is your, what is, so if someone was interested in applying, what is your hiring process since, you know, you're, Technically, like we talked about, uh, you're a secondary PSAP. You're, a, you know, you don't, you don't have the police stuff. You don't run background. Ch- you know, you don't have to do all the police side of things. What is this? Is also my own personal loss too, because I'm not sure. What, what's your hiring process on that? Well, it's been a minute since I applied, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know if you maybe were part of like the hiring team or interviewing team. Or I do get to like help that. interview if if I'm here and I'm available. Basically, you can go online and apply at our at medstar.com and then they have careers and you can apply online fill out the application and i believe that there is maybe a, like a personality test or just a a test that you do online if i'm wrong and mistaken i'm i forgive me but then our our um, hr department will reach out to you and have you fill out what other additional forms and then they do a critical test i know online everyone yeah everyone in our district uh, pretty much everyone anywhere if you're going to put a headset on for emergency services critical is critical yes um, on the last one of our other podcasts uh one of the supervisors informed me that there are free practice tests and we actually went online and found them during the podcast, I typed in and found them. And if you want the whole thing, you have to pay for it, of course. Hello, this is a, this how we run. That's how people run. It's not our test. Sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. It's not our test. It's someone else's. Um, but they do give you a little bit of the free, a little bit of a test of it with a free version. Yes. So if anyone wants to try that again, you can do that. But yeah, that's definite across the board. I think the difference maybe, I don't want to miss, miss, be speak about this, but I don't know if you guys do like the the hiring pack or the background packet, the personal history statement. Like you know, and when you when you apply for law enforcement, like the police side yes. of stuff, there is like a a college dissertation <laughs> that you have to fill out for because they got to know everything. Yes, and I didn't know if you do. You guys have that too. I believe. I believe not to the extent that not the police extent, does. Because we're not checking, you guys aren't checking backgrounds and have other access to other information. But you do have, obviously, HIPAA. Cool, cool. You know, people got to be careful with that. Yes. We've got the HIPAA. And then, of course, you're going to be a first responder. Mm-hmm. So you can't have, like, felonies. And yeah. there has to be certain requirements. But I can 
anybody could actually check with HR or I could check with HR. I do know the critical test you have to pass it with ever, whatever marks that our department has set, our manager has set. And once you pass that, then you get invited for an interview. Yeah. And so the interview, it's very intimidating. I'm sure four, three or four people sitting across from you asking you all these questions. And it can be very intimidating, but seriously, it's, it's a great career. It's a great job to have. And if you can get through the hiring process, which is just a little bit, you have to do your drug screen and, um, and then you come in once you do get hired you have a orientation a couple of days and then you go through your emd class your cpr class and we we provide all those certifications for you so that's yeah that's so something. you get on the job training just like you would at any other 911 center in our district and you know yeah the hiring that is one thing that we've been we've been uh trying to tell people it, it's it can be uh it's it's not a fast process with emergency services because they have to check backgrounds. They have to, I mean, y'all, when you get hired in emergency services, whether it's MedStar, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a primary PSAP and they, you have to have a clean background. And we've talked about this before. Be honest. Yes. Just put it all on there. Okay. Honesty is the best policy. And you know, like you said, if they have questions, they can reach out because all your guys' information of contact is on your your website. And then yes. you also share, too, with your hiring on your social media. So if you're following MedStar, then you'll have no problem finding out their information. So there you are. <laughs> yeah, come work with us. We, we enjoy some of the newer people coming in mm-hmm. and because um, we're growing. I mean, yeah. Tarrant County's growing. Oh, my gosh. It is like a weed. Because <laughs> so, I think, what's the, I think Fort Worth Magazine said, or one of the Fort Worth publications just released it not that long ago that we were like, I'm going to probably say it wrong and someone's going to be like, that's not correct. But just bear with me. I think it was like, we're the fifth largest growing city in the country. I think, I think it's, un, un, it's I know it's under 10. That's, we're in the top 10. I'm pretty sure we're in the top five. Could be wrong. I know that we were the 13th largest city several years ago in the United States. And it's only gonna be a matter of time before we outgrow Dallas. Dallas has more population, Mm -hmm. but we have more land. So it's just a matter of time before- (laughs) Not long, much longer. I know. (laughs) And um, I know Tarrant County for the state of Texas was the largest growing county last year, I believe. That, so I I think my statistic might be a little dated by a couple of years, but I remember reading that Maybe this is where I'm getting the five, but the point being is that we're rapidly raising the raising rising on these charts of how fast we're going. But for a while there, we were the fourth or fifth uh, within the rapid growth, like the percentage of growth each year. We were we were in the top five in the United States because it just like boomed. Because I remember when I started the district like almost seven years ago, there was like 1.7 million people in Tarrant County and now there's like two two million or a two lot. point one. Two point a, 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 a few lot. a few people. A, few. <laughs> a plethora, a bushel. Yes. <laughs> but I think there's like two point one or two point two I think it's two point one million now. I'm like, that's insane for under even like a ten year mark. I know that we're super cool and everyone wants to live here, but that's a lot of people. So it is. Like you said, we're going to have to, you know, all these agencies are going to expand and they're going to have to get more people. So, you know, apply for a great career with, and I'm, I would assume your benefits are wonderful. Yes. And they start, do they start right away? Yes. See, there you go. Day one, you get benefits. You you start with your benefits and, um, yeah, we're, we're always hiring because of that growth. When I started in the comm center, communication center, I'm sorry, there was just two of us and we took calls and dispatch oh those my gosh. orally like over the radio and now we have a, a different CAD system and it kind of dispatches for us so we don't have to do as much talking on the radio but we have a minimum of, of eight call takers now and then um, what did what so because you've been here for a hot minute, minute um, what are some of the things that because I kind of love do I love like the history of like what did Tarrant County look been to her now like is there sick i mean i know there's significant changes i mean i've only been here 11 years and i can tell when there used to be nothing somewhere and now there's apartments or something yes. what is a very significant area that when you go by, by it in tarrant county you're like oh my gosh this used to be out in the 
you know, boonies or something, but now you're, it's just another part of Fort Worth or it's just another part of Tarrant County, like building a city. Is there any like specific or significant area that just kind of pops out to you that used to just be farmland or just everything north of the loop uh touche grasshopper (laughs) everything north of the loop has been amazingly quick to grow and spread it's just busy and then it's busy up there in fact i just lived on north riverside outside the loop and i was had horses there because it was country and there were cows all around us and oh it was it was crazy now there's hospitals up there texas motor speedway um yeah all the apartments, businesses, the everything. Apartments. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the house is just boom, 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 going yes. all up. It's like any land that can be found is going to be turned into a subdivision. And that's one of the reasons that MedStar built one of the, the second hub up there, just because number one, the roads were hard to get to and get units that cleared the hospitals in our central area back up there. So now that we have hospitals up there, when they clear, we have them more readily available, but they actually start shifts up there. So they start shift in the mornings during rush hour or at night during rush hour. So they're already up in the Northern area. So if there's any accessibility issues, they're still there, obviously, if you have a wreck on the freeway or um, traffic, I mean, we have the same traffic delays and have yeah. some of the same traffic laws as all the other driver so yeah no that's 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 so true because i feel and this is just my own opinion i feel that the traffic up north because i was living up there and then now i live south fort worth and it's completely it's a little bit different it yes. doesn't seem as uh hectic all the time and it's even on the weekends you know i th- always think of emergency services too i'm just like oh how do these people make that happen you know because it could just get crazy especially 35 that will be consistently worked on until now in my death <laughs> so, yes you know as it grows yes they're doing a beautiful job um and i appreciate them but it's like oh this, this, by the time know. they finish we're gonna have flying cars and we won't need i-35 yeah, and you know what and then i'll feel so bad for all those men and women that took all that time and then all of a sudden it's like oh you know what you guys we're good we actually have the flying delorean here <laughs> yes. we're good and a little back to the future reference there uh but yeah it was even going on the weekends there was always traffic, always traffic and trying to get out in certain streets that didn't have signal lights and things. It was, and then they started putting in the roundabouts. Yes. Those, those are very, uh, I know they're supposed to increase less accidents I, or decrease the accidents, whatever the, yeah, I don't know. Um, I always am curious of like, I wonder what the, you know, the, the tactic was for that or a strategic plan was for that. And I know they can probably be confusing if you had no experience with them or whatnot, you know, you just want to make sure when you're in the roundabout that you keep going, like you don't stop for coming, someone coming in. It, they just yield to you and you all just kind of flow. If you want to see an example of a scary roundabout, watch National Lampoon's European Vacation. Yes. When he can't, he's like, I can't get right. <laughs> so yes. he turned, Chevy Chase is trying to get out of this roundabout because he went on the inner lane. We don't have those excessive amounts, but uh, more, it's more frustrating to try to get into the roundabout uh, with traffic coming on. So just be careful. Uh, you guys have one down here. Weather for traffic circle. Oh, that one. That one I've seen a lot of close calls. Yes. I'm sure that there's even... Some of our own employees have gotten in accidents. They're either coming to work or going home. Oh. I just know the roundabouts are nowhere in the driver's ed training. Are they not? <laughs> well, my son is 24 now, so he took his... Um, when he took his course, they were not in there anywhere. Wow. So that's been many years ago. Oh. But well, they, if anybody has any updated information, if you have a kiddo that is doing driver's ed training and you see roundabout information, let us know. Um, I would like to know if it's in there. It should be in there. Uh, or, you know, uh, get a hold of TxDOT and t- or do what it's part, yeah, Department of Transportation and yep. tell them, hey, we need to put roundabouts in the educational purpose of it yeah don't worry about the parallel parking anymore we need practice oh on yeah the oh my gosh that's another thing too let's go off topic here but a lot of people have it great now if they're still testing for parallel parking because now everybody's got backup cameras yes when i was doing like, there was no backup cameras and you just yeah i don't have one i have a 
hitch on the back of mine and so I have to get out and spot myself to make sure I'm not oh wow you got to get like airline cone people directing yes. you to back <laughs> yes I do <laughs> I do the, yeah I, you know and even some well I put my bike rack on the back of my personal car so you know then and you've so got that extra yeah it, but now my little sensor like keeps beeping at me because it thinks I'm gonna run over something because the bike rack is yes in the right way. there and yeah so I tried to we went somewhere and I was going to parallel park in and I was like I, but then I'm like no I give up and I didn't even give it a second I got, I'll go fine you know I need to walk I'm fine <laughs> I need to walk so yeah, let us know if 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 roundabouts are are making their way into driver's education. I don't even know what driver's ed- uh, education consists of anymore. Like how long you have to wait now? Because before, back in the day, you literally just once you turn sixteen, you got and this is Illinois, you got your white slip. You could drive with the parent, or once you became in the in the written part, the, the classroom part of driver's ed. You got your white slip so you could drive with a parent or whatever, and then you took the class, and then you got your blue slip, and then it was all quick, and you just had to wait for your birthday if you weren't 16 yet. But with a blue slip, you could drive with anybody who had their license. That's super safe. And then, because <laughs> then your buddy who just got your license, like, yeah, let's go. Um, and then once you turn 16, you take your blue slip, you went to the DMV, and you went and got your license. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think you have to get like hours of driving in or something, right? So when I did it back in the day, and I'm much older than you, I got my <laughs> hardship. So I, my sister and I both got ours at 15 because we had jobs oh. after school. And so we would get a hardship license, but nobody could ride with us like a, a younger, or your siblings could if you were drop, dropping them off at school or something, but you couldn't have like all your friends with you. Yeah, you couldn't until have you a party 16. bus going around. That makes sense. But when my son took it, when my daughter and son, I did their driver training. You have an option of going through the school, if it's not full of the classes, or hiring a private, you know, driver's ed, um, or having your pa- parent teach you, which you have to log the hours, and they have to do the online classes through the text dot, and then you've got to find one of the places that are open and can take you because now they're two, three months out just to get a driver's license. Oh, no, no, no. In last podcast, when we were talking to Anissa, I think it was when I talked to Anissa, yeah, we, she asked if, what she asked me something about, well, we asked if people could see people's driver's license pictures on returns or something like that. <laughs> and she was like, oh, when's the last time you got your driver's license picture done? And I was like, actually recently. Um, but I was not aware, yeah, again, to remind people, you have to make appointments. There's no more walking into driver's license facilities and being like, oh, hey, I'm here for an address change or this no you have to do like get online make your appointment and my appointment was like a month or two out before I could come back and see him again but now I'm good and I don't have to go back for eight years that's excellent I know all I went in there for an address change he's like you want to update your you want to your license gonna expire in 2024 do you want to go ahead and renew it I'm like (laughs) all right but then he had to take my picture and it's horrible I talked about that last time. So if you weren't, if you're really interested in that conversation, you can go listen to the last podcast and hear that, that fun story. So, but yeah, so roundabouts, be careful, you know, don't stop in the roundabout, keep the flow of traffic going. Well, unless there's a wreck or unless somebody's there's, in okay, there, well, then of course you have to right. stop, but you know, yes. small dog, turtle, horse, whatever, start, stop for somebody or <laughs> yes. emergency vehicle coming through. Yes. Stop. Stop. Slow down and yes. move over. Yes. And that's your, yes, definitely. And that's the thing with these roundabouts too, is again, that's why I say like when you're actually in it, you don't stop for the incoming traffic coming up. They're supposed to yield for you. So that can cause some wrecks too, because the person behind you doesn't realize because they know you're not supposed to be stopping and then they may do that. So just kind of keep the flow by slow speeds and be careful. Yes. So I know I have to go that way when I leave here. <laughs> Up north to the roundabouts or the weather no, for traffic? No, the south is the weather for traffic circle, yes. as you call it. So now I'm like, uh, I guess we're ending this on a good note. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully on a safe note. But thank you so much, Stacy, for your time today and, and sharing your, your career path and everything. And congratulations on all your years of service here on MedStar and what you do for the community and how Helping everyone and uh, helping your fellow first responders as you're teaching so not even just here at MedStar but now teaching so many of them. Uh, is it just in Texas? Or are you going outside of Texas? Just in Texas right now, and I'm an in-house instructor, so we do the classes here. But as you said, they come from different agencies and and take the class with me. So thank you, and I'm very still passionate about what I do. I I love it, and and 
you can too. I love it. A little plug there. You can too. And you can work with Stacy, and she can guide you and bring you up. And I'm sure one day she's be looking to pass that torch and maybe that torch will be going on to you. So go to uh, medstar.com. You can check out their employment there and you can start the application process. And like Stacy said, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact them, their HR department and ask any hiring questions that you may have. They're super nice here. I can vouch for that. I've talked to a lot of people here and they're always friendly and they do a great job and the men and women out there. So thank you to all MedStar personnel in dispatch and on the ambulances for helping save lives and doing what you do. And please take care of yourself in this heat. So again, Stacy, thank you. This was fun. It wasn't that scary, was it? No, it wasn't. Thank okay. you. Thank you for having me, Abby. <laughs> no problem. Everyone, thanks for listening. We'll have a new podcast episode. We talk to another supervisor or manager from one of our many 911 communication center here in Tarrant County 911 districts. And until next time, have a fabulous week. 